Today's video is brought to you by Pickles. Hello and welcome to Intro to Intervals with me, Fake Dr. Levin. Today we're going to do fifths and sixths. Now, if this is your first Intro to Intervals video, I recommend watching the other ones first so that you can get an idea of what process we're using. So, let's get started. For our ascending perfect fifth going up, I like to use the Star Wars theme. Star Wars, talking about Star Wars, give me those Star Wars, yada de do. One, five, Star Wars, perfect fifth, going up. That's a really handy one. Going down, I use use a ho, oh, use a ho. That might be offensive or confusing to some people why I use that one, and the reason is because that's legitimately the example that got stuck in my head first. I was in middle school or something, and I heard that song, I thought it was hilarious at the time, and it got stuck in my head, and it's just been my go-to, perfect fifth descending oral reference ever since. Even when I'm uh, analyzing classical music or doing something really pretentious with music, where I'm like uh, analyzing a Bartok quartet or, you know, whatever, stuff like that, uh, I'll still think, use a hoe, use a hoe. So it's helped me out, I hope it helps you out too. Um, now for diminished fifths or flatted fifths, that's the same thing as our augmented fourth, and we covered that last week in the fourths video. So we used the Simpsons theme and some other stuff, and uh, I recommend watching the fourths video to go over the augmented fourths again, keeping in mind that that is the same thing as a diminished fifth or a flatted fifth. Um, now for an augmented fifth or a sharp fifth, that's the same thing as a flatted sixth, or a minor sixth. And since we're going over sixths in today's lesson as well, it's a cool opportunity to kill two birds with one rock. Uh, so let's learn the augmented fifth, which is the same thing as the minor sixth at the same time. So what I like to use is the Crazy Train riff. This second part, after this, this part, that's a minor six. So you got a good minor sixth going up and down in that example, as well as a good perfect fifth going up and down. It's not my go-to perfect fifth reference, but for some reason it is my go-to minor sixth reference. I don't know sometimes how my brain's working, but that is what helps me. So I wanted to put that out there for you. Crazy train, that's a perfect fifth, fifth going down, but then this is a minor sixth. Ba do do ba, going up and down. This is an augmented fifth or a minor sixth. They're the same thing. Da boo boo ba. Actually, now that I think about it, Another good uh, minor sixth going up is that saxophone thingy that goes... That's a minor sixth, do-da. do le do le minor sixth or augmented fifth. So, there you go. Minor sixth or augmented fifth going up and down. Crazy train theme and that saxophone thingy that I've heard and I've... I have no idea really where it's from, but I'm sure I could figure it out with Google. I'm just, I'm just too busy for Google. I don't know. No, I just haven't bothered, but I'm sure I'll learn it someday where it came from. And yeah, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, uh, which I appreciate, because I'll learn something. Um, all right, so now regular old major six, oral reference for major six. You can go and do the NBC theme. Let's do it like. Just the open strings, actually, D, B, and G strings. There's your NBC theme with tons of distortion. N, N, B, C, N, B, N, B, N, B. That's, that's a handy dandy going up major six. Buddy. And then going down, I use the Phantom of the Opera song uh, that goes, Night time sharpens. Night time, night time, night time, night time sharpens. Dooby dooby doo doo. So these oral references um, have helped me to identify the intervals a lot. 
If you know any other songs or find them on the internet that you're more familiar with that you prefer to use your use as oral references, then that's great. These are just it's just I'm I'm just trying to present the idea that it's great to use oral references. I know that today some of them were a little more obscure, but I wanted to show you the ones I actually use. All right. So, let's get to the fretboard thing. Here are a couple ways to find perfect fifths on the fretboard. We can start with our power chord. These are all perfect fifths here. And then, of course, when we get to the G and B string, we have to adjust. Because they're a different interval apart than all the rest of the strings, as you may have realized by now. That little difference accounts for a lot of confusion, but it makes chords like this possible, so I am grateful for that discrepancy. But here we go, perfect fifths. So on the G and B string, it'll span four frets. On adjacent strings, everywhere else it'll just be your spanning three frets power chord. Now for augmented fifths, you would just take that and sharpen it, raising it a fret. And of course that's the same thing as a minor sixth. And then you do the same thing here. Take your perfect fifth and sharpen it. There's a nice minor sixth. You can also find the minor sixth by taking, um, not rather than adjacent strings, you skip a string and you can do this. Here, this spans two frets and it's skipping a string. So it's the G and E string, fifth and fourth fret. That's a minor sixth, which also helps us find another way to play the perfect fifth, like so. If we do this from the low E string to the D string, we're going to have to span three frets, so it's a little different. And because there's more options than normal this week, I'm going to actually have a transcription of the different ways to play these different intervals on the fretboard, which will be available in the description, in the link in the description below. And then for major sixths, if you do it on adjacent strings, it'll span one, two, three, four, five frets. Or if you do it on your G and B string adjacent, it's going to be six frets. Night time sharpens that stuff. And B, C, and B, C. There we go. <laughs> All right, so there you go, there's a major six. And then if you do the skipping a string thing that I did there, it's gonna span one fret. Oops. So there I am on the fifth fret G string and the fifth fret E string, and I'm skipping the B string here. And on other strings, it'll span two frets. So it's going to span one fret on the D and B, and one fret on the G and E. Everywhere else it will be two frets, which of course you will find in the transcription. This week's crazy fat ear training beat is going to be perfect fifth, down, then up, to minor sixth, then down, then up to major sixth then down. So you're gonna get experience going up to fifth, up to minor sixth, or augmented fifth, same thing, and then up to major sixth, and then it's gonna keep moving up like that in different keys. So let's take a listen here. Oh yeah, and on the way down it's gonna be the opposite. Alright, let's hear it. Up a fifth, up minor sixth, up a major sixth so get experience now we're gonna change keys 